There are only a couple of vehicles in this world that once a new one launches, the whole world stops to look at it. For car guys, it's probably the Porsche 911. For bike guys, probably the Ducati Panigale. But for us Indian motorcyclists, it has to be this thing over here. This is the all new Gen 3 KTM Duke 390. And today we are at Bajaj's Chakan test track to test this monster out. Now KTM wasn't messing about with this new Duke 390. Almost everything has been changed. Heck, I think so each and every component has been changed and this thing doesn't share a single part with the outgoing Duke 390. Let's start off with the trellis frame. Brand new and it's a little bit of a modular setup. KTM knows that this thing is going to spawn an Adventure 390 variant as well. So this uh, trellis frame is made with that uh, Adventure 390 also in mind. Uh, and of course, it's finished in KTM's orange. Second is the engine. Brand spanking new engine. It has also increased in displacement. Older engine was a 373cc liquid-cooled single-cylinder engine. This is a 399cc liquid-cooled single-cylinder engine. Power has also gone up. This now makes 46 HP and 39 Newton meters of torque compared to the outgoing versions 43 bhp and 37 Newton meters of torque. Now in today morning's briefing, KTM told us that this thing is a mixture between the Gen 1's characteristics and the usability and rideability of the Gen 2. All of the tech features and the rider aids that the new Duke 390 comes with, it is cutting edge. It is the best in class. You get MTC, you get switchable ABS, you get rider modes and I'll come to all of that in just a bit. But when it comes to the power and the way this thing rides, they wanted to bring back the nostalgia with the raw power and speed of the Gen 1. And having ridden it on the track, well, I can definitely confirm that this thing is a pure hooligan. KTM has also given us a brand new 5-inch TFT screen. Now, this screen, first of all, is really nice to look at. They said that they've gotten technology from the latest and greatest smartphones. So the graphics, the contrast, the animations, visuals, all are super crisp and super smooth. And apart from that, the main thing as to why this screen is important is because it has all of your rider aids and the configurations for them. So you have a brand new set of buttons and toggles, which is everywhere. The left hand side is for activating the menu and going through it. So once you're in the motorcycle menu, first of all, you have rider modes, you have track, you have rain and you have street. Now in rain mode, uh, the traction control is super intrusive. The throttle response completely changes. You don't get full power in rain mode, whereas in street and race, you get full power. But I mean, like the name says, uh, traction control, ABS or all of that, uh, go into a little bit of a different configuration in both modes depending on the situation. Then you have ABS as well. So you have switchable ABS, road for normal ABS and then you have super motor mode in which you can completely turn off the rear uh, brakes ABS. So you know you can do some nice slides and all of that stuff. Not really what I can do, I mean I don't have that skill but anyways if you're an experienced rider that is something that you really want. Then you have MTC. Uh, this is basically your traction control and you have two modes in this again. You have off and you have on. Now again, I'm not the most experienced rider and being on the track with such a powerful motorcycle for the first time, I woosied out a little bit and I kept it all on. I was not trying to risk it or get hurt. So yeah, but I can definitely confirm that this thing with traction off is a burnout machine and it will not hook up until and unless you're in third gear. That's how much power and torque this thing has. And last but not least, probably the coolest feature of the new Duke 390 launch control. Once you put this bike into track mode, you can activate launch control and this thing will hold the revs for you at 7000 RPM and let go of the clutch gradually, give it full beans and this thing shoots off. Now, KTM told us that the older Duke 390 used to do 0 to 60 kph in 2.8 seconds. This thing now does it in 2.4 or 2.5 seconds. So yeah, this thing is rapid. But 
if you think the story ends there well you're in for quite the ride because this thing has adjustable suspension front and rear let's start off with the rear you get a wp apex mono shock which is offset now and this has been done because ktm wants to get the duke 390 into its international lineup and it has to look like its elder brothers and siblings uh, so that's why the shock absorber is now offset uh, talking about the adjustability, it gets 10 steps of preload adjustment and 5 steps of rebound adjustment. And this is going to be super helpful for all of you nerdy people out there that want to get the last tenth out of the lap time. And you have stuff to play with at the front as well. At the front you have WP Apex upside down forks and at the front you get 5 clicks of compression adjustment and 5 clicks of rebound adjustment. So again, I mean this thing is like it's built for nerds basically and the little details here and there that KTM have done have really made a difference in its performance they've chopped off the exhaust because they wanted to save weight they've put in forged parts somewhere around here and they've basically shed a lot of weight even though the engine has increased in size and this thing is very light very powerful and quite the monster on track After we were done with the track session, we headed towards a local B road where on the way we could test the daily usability and also a real world scenario as to how the Duke 390 is on a hypothetical Sunday morning canyon hoon. First off, the new 390 doesn't throw any hot air towards your legs which immediately makes it much more easier to ride. The seating position is also a little different with the rider being more in the bike rather than on it, giving it a more intuitive feel. The seat was also decently cushioned and overall it's a very easy bike to ride with stuff like the quick shifter plus making it super easy to just roll through the gears. But once you get onto your favourite B road, the 390 goes from a tame pit bull to a rampant raging bear. With 46 HP and only 168 kgs to lug around, the new Duke 390 boasts of a ridiculous power to weight ratio of 270 HP per ton. Now this might seem intimidating and honestly, the straight line acceleration of the new Duke is unmatched in its segment, but the new rider aids have really made all of this power accessible. On the guards, it is a lot of fun. Of course, the more experience you have, the more you can exploit the limits of the new Duke 390. But even with a rider like me, riding nowhere close to the limits, you can have loads of fun. The grip is amazing and moreover with the new suspension adjustments, you can make the bike softer, stiffer, whatever you want. Coming to the looks of the new Duke 390, what KTM has tried to do is make the 390 a part of the international lineup of Dukes that you get, stuff like the 790, the 1290 and all of that good stuff. And pretty much looks like a baby 790 or a 1290 in my opinion. It's become super aggressive, the lights have changed, basically the whole bike is brand new from the ground up. It looks completely different to the outgoing Wait, variant. And some things on the bike are a little questionable, uh, stuff like especially the seat, I mean an orange seat kind of looks a little weird. Uh, personally, I prefer the other color that was there at the launch like that nice navy blue with the orange accents. That was uh, a really, really good looking configuration. This not so much and I don't like the way the new stickers look. Uh, KTM has also done some extra work in making the decals look a little bit better. So instead of like plastering a sticker on top of the paintwork, what they've basically done is painted the bike, put a sticker and then they've finished it with a clear coat of lacquer so looks really premium but i don't like the design of the decal overall if you remove all of the things that i don't like and if you take into consideration the navy blue bike that i like i think so it's a fantastic looking motorcycle uh, super aggressive from the front uh, still reminiscent of the duke family looks like a baby 790 yeah i think so that's a great combination
and this new look has also facilitated a lot of other things now the main reason why the new duke is so different is because like i said the chassis which is a trellis frame is brand new from the ground up it doesn't share anything with the outgoing duke 390 so this new chassis has also allowed them to do a lot of uh, tweaks here and there which actually improve the performance and the way this motorcycle rides for example this radiator and cooling system over here is curved now instead of having just a plain flat surface now because of the curved surface you get 10 percent extra cooling and the surface area of the cooling system has also increased uh, then you have these new wheels which have been borrowed from the rc390 as well as the braking system and this bike has reduced a lot of unsprung mass and that you can definitely feel when you're on track or actually gunning it through some nice canyons. As you saw in the start of the video, the 390 is an absolute weapon on the track. But that does not mean that KTM has compromised the daily usability of the new Duke 390. In fact, they've tried to improve it as much as possible and this can be seen through small little tweaks that actually make a pretty big difference. Stuff like reducing the seat height from 820mm to 800mm in this new variant and this has made the Duke 390 a little bit more accessible to the average Indian since well we're a little vertically challenged they've also changed the torque curve a little bit 80% of the torque is now available at 5000 rpm which makes it much more usable in urban situations also they've increased the size of the fuel tank the outgoing version had a 13 or a 13 and a half liter fuel tank and now this is a 15 liter fuel tank which is very helpful because a lot of people also use the duke 390 as a touring machine so that extra 1.5 liters of space will also be super helpful now over the years the duke 390 has faced some really stiff competition and nowadays there are a lot of new contenders in its segment that are popping up stuff like the new apache rtr 310 the bmw g310r the upcoming uh, Aprilia RS457 and Yamaha R3 are also there but just like in the past I think so the Duke 390 is going to destroy the competition and this is just from the first ride and I've always been a Duke fan so I'm probably a little bit biased towards it but I mean the spec sheet of this thing converts into real life as well all of the tech is super usable super helpful stuff like the MTC the switchable ABS the different riding modes of course the look of the bike super aggressive it's going to be very appealing to the younger generation and of course the undeniable explosive acceleration of the Duke 390 with this brand new 400cc uh, single cylinder block. So yeah, I think so the Duke 390 is going to retain its crown in its segment. What do you think? Comment down below your thoughts on the new Duke 390 and I'll catch you in the next one.